We open our meeting with a period of public comment that includes tenant comment, staff comment, and public comment. So I will ask, please, uh, the secretary, would you please um, moderate this portion of the public comment? Um, yes, Madam Chair. Um, there was a request that um, because we have uh, the accountant Gary DePace here, if you could move resolution 2024-05 above all of those um, items so that we weren't having his time uh, put aside. Are you still Understood. This is actually our regular practice and Forgive me for overlooking that. So as is usual, when we have our quarterly reports <clears throat> with our accountant, Gary DePace, and I'm looking for, oh, there you are. So um, we're going to defer to this item, which is listed under um, new business, but we're going to allow for this to move up to allow um, Mr. DePace to then get on with his evening. So um, I'll first ask um, Mr. DePace, uh, can you see everybody? Yeah. And very good. Yeah, can, okay, can welcome, welcome to our meeting. Thank you, and um, it's good. Glad to be here. I mean, we're we got to the end of our fiscal year, and so therefore we've got our, our state financial reports that need to be accepted. Um, there were a lot of things which everyone was aware of um, that we incorporated this year: a transfer in of Hampshire Regional assets um, that got closed out. Uh, that became part of our budget revision we did. If you remember, we had to vote on a 409. So we have a 409 program we're going to be voting on, which is this will be a one-time vote uh, because beginning our new fiscal year, these all transferred into our 400 uh, consolidated program. Um, so there's actually will be four votes to accept the financials. Uh, let me just give the highlights of the 400-1 program. Um, if you remember when we did a budget revision, we indicated our reserve level would be at 780,258. We actually closed the books at 878,033. Uh, that's an increase of over, um, well, about $100,000. The majority of that income did come from our solar operator um, revenue that we received because we are part of a solar field. Um, whether I, we generated more uh, because of high sunshine, mm -hmm. I don't know, but we just take what we get. So that was actually a positive to that program. Um, excuse, so me, um, program excuse me, excuse um. me. Sorry, I mean, I would like to be able to share my screen with your document. And if you could just let, uh, uh, do you see the board resources there? Which which document would you like me, why are you referring to now? Or do you want to just give a general overview and then refer? It, it should have been, it, you should have received all, I don't have them on the screen. You should have received them. If you can save those, they're the, uh, it would be the quarterly operating statement 400-1. Can you share that? Yes. Just a minute. Okay. Bring it up. Okay, I might need to expand it, but I'm gonna at least share it for folks to read along. Are folks able to see the document to which- Oh, there you go. Can you blow it up a little bit, please? Yeah, it, it, just bear with me while I try to make okay. this zoomed a little bit better. You can go ahead, Gary. Okay, uh, on that document, that's the screen one, um, you'll see under retained revenue, uh, line number nine, uh, that was about a $30,000 increase over budget. So that represented a direct uh, from the solar that uh, we, get to, we get to retain that um, portion. The other portion of that would probably be under a savings from our non-utility expense level. Um, and we had a treasurer's report, which when we, when we had our expenditures, that during the year we only spent rough, roughly 87% of our resources. Um, 
we were able to receive either state grants for other work uh, in which that, that helped us. So that particular form where it shows the income and expenses for the 400-1 program um, was definitely a saving. So if you continue down on that to page. I'm lost. Where are we? Where are you saying that? I'm so sorry. Thank you for uh, 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 blowing it up. Good job. But where, where are you, my, uh, Mr. DePace? Please. This, line, this line right here, Which 155 word? versus 185. We had budgeted 155. We received 185. So that, that is a positive. Okay. Can you um, tell me the line number, please? Nine. Thank you. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, that be because it's a retained revenue source, that means that that does not that revenue does not offset subsidy. Okay, so that's why we were able to increase our reserves. Um, okay, and as you scroll down, I guess the other there's a there's many pages here. There's, it breaks down the 200 program, the 667 program, the 705 program. Um, you know, and, and, and I think the most important thing for board members to comprehend is the end financial result, which is probably the last page of this report. Okay, if you want to continue right scrolling down. I'll, I know. I'll go page down and page down and page down. Yeah, page and down. So the 300 pages, did you say it's 300 pages, Gary? Well, no, not 300, but it's it's quite a ways back. And it's... it's okay, it's, I think I'm on the last page now. I'll go okay. up one. Move up a little bit. Um, oh, that's our expenditures from our non-routine. That's what we bought from non-routine. So we're not we're not quite there yet. That just shows what we budgeted and what we spent. And if you you understand that when we did the budget revision, that's what we were that's what we budgeted, and we had already purchased those items for those amounts. Um, those were items that were planned. So keep keep on going. That's as far as I can go on this document. I'm on the very last page. Okay, page I'm three. surprised. Okay, because there was another page to that, which well, would I'm have shown not it would have been, it would say 051-6, unless it's out of place, unless it was earlier. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Gary. Let me go back then to the okay. to our resources and pull up the next document. Okay, now let me make this larger. Okay, that's our 409 program. That that okay. represents the Hampshire Regional. I um, can't, you're gonna have to tell me which of these as I go through to stop. Okay, that one, that one you're looking at is says 400 9, right up there in the left hand corner. I see it. And here. is this the document you would like, or would you like me to go to a different sure, you can, we, can, you, we can go into that. Then let me make this larger. I'm getting a headache, you guys. I'm going to stop sharing. And I'm just going to let you wing it because we expected that you might be able to share yourself. For the next time, okay. Gary, we'll make this easier for you to share. Back okay. to you. If I, if, I knew I had, if I knew it was to, for me to share, I because I know in the past, I think... Sorry um, for the miscommunication. Jack, Jack would do it, but that's fine. I mean, I don't think you so. understand. There's a, there's a lot of numbers here. It just re reflects down to a few things, and that is our operating reserve budget versus what we actually went into. And those items in the 400 program, I pointed out the reserves actually went up. The points that you should be understanding is when our reserves close lower than what we budget and what we were approved for. Um, that's not the case for the 400 program. It was the case for the 689, um, and that's when it did happen. I, I That's one of the things I spoke to Kara and Sharon about, and Jack. It had to do with a lot of maintenance happening at the 689. We were able to get some mold remediation funds from our capital improvement, but we still had to use our reserves um, over what we budgeted to take care of some issues in the bathrooms, and um, environmental problems we had with air quality in the 689. Um, 
So our reserves di did go below what we had budgeted by about $15,000. But that, it sounds like it's not much. It's not much when we have, you know, 780 in our 400 program, but in our 689, that is substantial. And we're gonna have to work at um, kind of building that reserve up in the future. And we do that through our budgeting process and working with Boston. Um, so that's that's what basically I see in our 689 program is just a, a small concern. And it's a concern that we can address. Um, our MRVP program is a reserve level where there is no minimum or maximum. We, we hold our own. The advantage is our budget guidelines this year allowed us for a $5 per unit increase on our administrative fee, which isn't much, but it is something. Um, and our reserve level in there is fine. Um, so those those basically are our four programs that uh, you're voting on tonight. And, and like I said, just getting into detail of every little uh, number, I think would be, um, I don't know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't do us well, we're time consumed, but I can, I can assure you that um, I feel comfortable with these operating statements uh, to be certified. Now, the other item that you're voting on tonight is the top five, which I think that was part of the, um, that's the fiscal year end form certification of the top five compensation of, the, of your five highest paid employees. And again, what I'm looking at as I completed that, because that's not just a matter of budget numbers, it's actually what we've paid them. Um, and the variances that are on the right-hand side of that are a minus 0.2%, a 0.3, a 0.3, a minus 0.3, and a 1.2. And the only time that there's an issue is if there's a variance of greater than 3%, which would then cause a audit finding in our agreed upon procedures with the state. And that's not the case. So this form, um, as, as, you're, as you look at it, um, is really not much to question and there's really not any problems um, with that report. And that's the other thing that you as board members are certifying tonight um, is the top five and those four reports uh, showing their operating reserves. And again, I see nothing that's going to, um, would trigger any issue, financial issues in our audits. Thank you, uh, Gary. Um, what I'd like to do is because you made the reference to the, um, to the resolutions, and there are four of them, I'd actually like to, uh, be, in order for us to open this up for discussion on the floor, I'd like to ask the secretary, um, rather that, uh, would you read those res well, first, yeah, would you read the um, resolutions? And I think that we could ask, I'm gonna ask if folks, when it comes time after these are read, if we can move these as a group for approval. Um, so I'll go ahead and ask first for the secretary to read the resolutions. I'll ask if we can move them as a group someone to make that motion. And then I'd like to open it up to the floor for discussion. I'll take it, we'll take it as we usually do, take a tally of questions and concerns, which um, Mr. DePace will be able to note, and then we'll be able to address those en masse. And then we'll have- okay, a I have a question, Madam, if you could explain something for me. So you wanna move this as a group, as a whole, and you don't want us asking them questions now. Is that what you're saying? In order to ask questions, we need to have a motion on the floor. Okay. So I'd like to, if you if you object to moving as a group, we can move them one at a time. Well, I don't have an objection. I just wanted to understand what you were saying. Thank you. Okay. So I'll, again, first I'll ask the secretary to read the resolutions. I'll ask if there is a motion to move them as a group onto the floor for discussion. And then I'll open up to the members of the board for, uh, I'll go around and ask, and we'll tally each of the questions and concerns. And then I'll ask Mr. DePace to address those before we ultimately take a roll call vote. Understood? Yes, Madam Chair, um, this is resolution uh, 2024-05, which is approval of the quarterly and year-end financials for fiscal year 2024, 
certification of the top five compensation document and certification of compliance with the lead paint notification laws as prepared and presented by Gary DePays. Whereas the Northampton Housing Authority wishes to certify that the quarterly and end of year financials, certification of the top five compensation document and certification of the compliance with the lead paint law, paint notification laws, financials, as indicated below for each program, the 401, 409, 689 and uh, uh, um, M, uh, the MH MRVP MRVP the 200 the 687 and the 667 the 705 and the MRVP therefore be it resolved that the board of commissioners of the Northampton Housing Authority does hereby approve the quarterly and end of year financials approves the certification of the top five compensation document and certification of compliance with the lead paint notification laws. The FY2024 as prepared by the accountant, Gary Pace, and presented to the board. Further, that the authority and the executive director in their name shall be authorized on and after the passing of this resolution to do, to do and perform on behalf of the authority all acts and the things required of the authority to fully perform all obligations, including electronically signing and submitting and be it resolved that the resolution shall take effect immediately. And may I ask you, um, Secretary, this is the first resolution of four, I think um, Gary referred to four votes. So are there an additional three resolutions? Or does that, was no. that all encompassing? I was just dealing with the thing. That, that was all encompassing. <laughs> yes, thank yeah, you. Yeah, That's what four. I hoped. So thank you. So first I'll ask, as the resolution was read, is there a motion to approve from the floor? Motion to approve. Is there a second, please? Second. <clears throat> second. Thank you. So moved Commissioner Brooks and seconded by Commissioner Jones. And so what I'd like to do in order to open this for discussion is um, I'll go around and ask folks what, con what concerns they may have or questions they may have for Mr. DePace. And then I'll let Mr. DePace answer those. So I'll go by a show of hands from the members of the board. And yes, Commissioner Tarbutton, please. Am I always the first to put my hands up? Well, uh, 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 Gary DePace, first of all, I wanna thank you. I, I feel like I'm so much smarter every time you're here. But I do have some questions and I didn't get a chance to. When you're talking about the solar, I'm yep. very interested in environmental issues. And I see on some of these things, which are not the easiest to read, some of these things, it's not that I don't know how, but they're just not easy to read for a variety of reasons. Um, no, you, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Mr. DePace, could you take note of each of these questions and concerns so that once we've sure. gone around, you might be able to address them all at once? Thank you. Go ahead, Commissioner Tarbutton. Yeah, for example, um, and the thing is, when you say 400, you'll have 400-9, 400-1. It would be right. really clarifying and easy if we know where we are. If that's here, you know, what, whatever building it is, it would just be, but I see that you don't have to, but that's why some of the confusion. But on uh, line item number 33, it says solar operating costs, and it's nothing. So what? please tell me a little bit what you were talking about, the solar well, operation, because it seems very good what we've done. Okay. Uh, Commissioner, I'm sorry, Mr. DePace, Mr. DePace, I'm sorry. Yep. Would you please note each of these questions and concerns, and then okay. I'll ask once we've tallied them all for you to go back? I know you're you're anxious. Okay. To, yeah, go ahead, Commissioner Tarbutton, with your other questions and concerns. So you don't want him answering these? You want him to wait till the end? Is that what you're saying, uh, <laughs> Chair? Chair, is that what you're oh, saying? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah. Okay. So, All right. So. Yes. Actually, I'd like to go around the room with each person's questions and concerns. And each of those, um, Mr. DePace will take note of. And then he'll be able to respond to all the questions and concerns that have been raised. And then I'll allow for a follow up if that's necessary. Because I do have several questions. But Please I'll go ahead. Ask, ask however many questions you would like. Well, and I do like the fact that you're asking all the board members, maybe they'll bring up the question that I have and probably even said it more articulately. So. I'm happy to start with someone else if you'd like to wait. I'm sure if anybody else wants to go. Sure, sure, okay. Uh, is there somebody else who would like to ask their questions or express their concerns? 
-hmm. Yes, Mr. Jones, Commissioner Jones, thank you. Thanks, it just Gary, um, yeah, I think I've been through enough of these to understand the basics. I just wanna confirm that um, in the beginning, in the, the fir very first report you gave, um, and I think Kara alluded to that in her cover letter for this meeting, uh, we were basically operated at 87% of what we had budgeted for the for the fiscal year. And is that excess money uh, from 87 to 100%, is that just automatically going into the operating reserve for the next fiscal year? That's my question. Thank you, Commissioner Jones. Is there anybody else with a question or concern for Mr. DePace? Commissioner Richards. Sorry, I'm muted. Um, uh, no, nothing additional at this point. Okay, Commissioner Brooks, anything from you? No, everything's fine. And Commissioner Kansa? You're muted, Commissioner. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes, which questions or concerns might you have for Gary DePace? I don't have any questions, thank you. Okay, thank you. Back to you, Commissioner Tarbutton. Okay, first of all, I want to just say this. I got this late Friday, and um, so I went through it, and I, I, don't, I don't feel like I'm adequate enough. I do appreciate everything that you said, but I don't feel like I'm adequate enough because I have questions in between that. And I get this from uh, this, and then I go use the DCC computer for some of the questions that I have. So I just have to put that out. But one of my questions is on number eight on the 400-1. It said other revenue subsidy related that was about 52 or maybe 53,000. Can you tell me what that is, please? Oh. Yeah, just yes. list them out. Just oh, list yeah, them out. Yes. Yeah, I'm sure that oh, you okay. Yeah, thank make you. A, make a woman confused. All right. And then um, the compensated absences, uh, uh, that's line on number 16. If you could help with that, it's about 8,000. And then the legal, and this is just on one building, and members compensation. So all from uh, number 18, 19, 20, and 21. And I guess what I'm trying to see on all of these, I'm trying to understand, I don't want to go through all of it. Where is money for professional development? You know, I'd like to know how much we're getting, how much we don't, because the training I got from Mass Nairo is that they have about 12,500 for professional de development, including travel. So I don't, I don't see it. I see a little bit of here and there. So I'm a little confused by that. And I'd like to know somewhere, I don't want anything hidden or something, I'd like to be assured that none, none of money or expenses went through a PR campaign. I'd like to be reassured that's not, that's not the case. And I received something from this from a Stephen DuPont, who I don't know who that is. And I didn't know if that was a part of your firm or not. But um, I, uh, those are just basically some of the questions that I have. And and then I also asked, and I've asked this before, where is money coming out? I think, I don't know if there's an operation fund, but money that are paying tenants, for example, you know, we have some tenants who are getting a certain amount off their rent for work. I'd like to know where that's coming from. I'd like to be able to reconcile this. So when I get something financial, I know it and I can feel confident. And I do appreciate all that you do. I want to make sure of that. And I do appreciate that. But that was, these are things that are determining, you know, my vote, because there's just too many questions. And I would like to have some more time to, to go over this, but I understand that, so. So, um, okay. Gary, I know you had yep. a set of questions from Commissioner Tarbutton, and you did yep. have a question a question also from Commissioner Jones. So if yep. you would first address the um, question raised by Commissioner Jones and then to the series of questions. Okay, for well, Jeff, Thank you. Well, basically the 87% um, does represent what we had budgeted and what we had actually spent. But the, one of the reasons why we were 13% under is if you remember, we originally in the our federal program, we budgeted just in case we need, we're gonna possibly lose operating reserves because there was a rumbling that we wanted to budget for extraordinary work um, if we were possibly going to lose uh, that operating reserve. Uh, that's in our federal program, 26, one and two. And okay. so we never did spend that. We didn't have to. Um, 
So I'm assure, I, will, I will assure you that next year we probably will be budgeting the same way, just in case. Uh, but the rumbling that we heard, that I heard last year, that they possibly were going to recoup reserves, um, never, never went anywhere. So, and yes, when we do not spend the res all the money we have, uh, it just stays in reserves. So I hope that answered that question. Yes, thank you. Okay, thanks, Jeff. Okay, regarding the other questions, solar operator expense. Um, that is solar operator expense is what we pay for our portion of um, the cost to run the solar farm that we participate in. And what happens is what we pay, we get an additional credit over and above that on our electric bill. And uh, that's what that additional difference goes and becomes part of the retained revenue side, which is the what we call other revenue retained, um, of the 185,000. Now that's that's primarily the solar that we get to keep, but that that account also incorporates for revenues that we receive from tenant damages that are um, that are charged directly to tenant uh, to tenants. Um, Basically, we end up having to do repair work. If it was a tenant damage, we get to retain that at the same level. So the expense side is maintenance contracts. The income is retained revenue. The difference between account 3690, other revenue subsidy related, is that that revenue is monies we receive from the laundry fund um, that offset the utility costs. And that's because it's it's subsidy related, it's that revenue decreases our subsidy earned. Um, so that 52,000 that's in there is a, it's, it's basically, most of it is our washer and dryer revenue that we receive. Uh, and it's used to offset our uh, subsidy. Let's see, the next step question. Oh, 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 I think I, I, you, I, I, just, I'm a minute, sorry. just a minute, um, Commissioner. I'd ask you please to let Gary finish his answers and then I'll go back to you for asking your clarifying questions. Okay, because this was about solar that I had a question. I understand. I understand okay, but let, me, let me write it down there so I can remember to go Thank back. Thank you. Oh, okay. We'll wait. Thank you. Go ahead. Yes, Gary, go ahead. Okay, back to what you called compensated at year expense. And that repre it represents the cost of balances of sick time and vacation time accruals from one period to the next. Um, in other words, when we look at our point in time, which is June 30th, we get a total of what is owed to uh, employees if they all retired on that day. And the difference between the year before and this year becomes an expense. And the 8201 represented the 400s portion of increased in accrued compensated absences. It's not an expense that actually is a dollar figure given to anyone. It's an accrual. That's why there's no budget numbers that we budget for. It just becomes an amount um, that is the difference between the year before. Uh, legal legal expenses is just that. That's the portion of the charges for our legal um, that we've spent for the whole year. Member compensation is also, uh, that's what number is the total amount that is allowed to be spent, paid to the board members. And I believe uh, Kara is taking care of that or... Um, you know, getting that ready to be paid. Um, I think that's pretty much, and no, then your question was a matter of, of training and competence. That becomes the 4190 account. And what gets budgeted in the 4190 for either training or um, travel, that's part of a budget. And as you, they, it's expended for, you know, development or um, training, that's what gets approved under account 4190. So that's 
That's what account tw line 25 is for. Um, as for the other thing, when you said PR compliance and stuff, I'm not sure exactly what where that's coming from. Maybe you can be a little clearer. Um, I'm allowed to. Does that kind of help you? Yeah, Commissioner Tarbutton, do you have some clarifying questions then? Yes, I do. First of all, the PR firm, I was told that there was money spent on a PR firm because of some things, and I wanted to know where that came from. If that's not an expense that NHA had to recoup, I'd like to know that. And if it's somewhere else, I'd like to see where that is. So um, you, so that's on that. And secondly, I, I tell you, I'm impressed with this solar farm. I want to know where is it? And that's a good thing. I'm surprised that's not all in the paper because the, the rave for cl climate change and things, that's a really wonderful thing. So I think this is the first time I'm hearing from that. So I'd like to know more about that. And then secondly, you mentioned the washer and dryer monies. Is that factored into the fact whether or not half of it goes to LTOs or goes to tenants? Because I'd like to look see where that, how much have we gotten? Uh, you know, I, I'd like to see that. So yeah. when it's put there, I just would like to have some clarification with it. And okay, so I said the legal fees. Sorry. Go ahead. And the legal fees and the charges and stuff that uh, uh, go into legal fees. I would also like to know, and I'd like to have a print out of the legal fees that residents have to pay NHA back because they're, 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 they're it's, it's in the Senate, it's in the lease or whatever, whatever, and the tenants have to pay for these fees. It's kind of strange. You got to, uh, you got to pay me because I sued you for whatever reason, maybe could be some legitimate and probably some that are not. But I just wanted to know a little bit about that as well. So I don't know if you can answer all this now, but I would like to know that. But I don't want you paying extra time to do this. And I know how so many my colleagues don't want to go through all these things here. But for me, and that's why I just I'm going to abstain on this because I just have some questions. But I appreciate everything that you've shared. And it just brings up more questions. But. It is uh, clarifying, so I appreciate that. Is there something you'd like to respond no with, Mr. DePace? While I mute whoever is speaking. No, it didn't. Move your mouse, Gary. I am. I'm sorry, Gary, Gary, is there something you'd like to respond to these or? I don't know. Am what I happened. muted? I just lost everything. Gary, we can hear you. But you're, you seem you're, to be frozen, frozen on your video. Oh, okay. Hold on one sec. Uh, never, never flashed. Now, who? There's somebody else speaking, though. I don't know who it is. It's I'm whoever Gary's to... speaking to. He's calling me now. Oh, Gary, oh, we can hear you, but you're frozen on your video. Yeah, I, I am. My computer just went, died. I don't. It didn't die. It's Gary. Not, we, it's it's okay. okay. We can hear you. Tell can Gary we can hear you. him. Okay. okay. So it doesn't okay, matter so. if we see you. Do you have some? Do you have some? Okay, uh, if you can hear me, that's or... fine. I have no idea what happened to my video. It's okay. Um, it's okay. We don't need to see you. Blank. So, but anyways, I can't hear you. But I hopefully, um, when it comes to those questions, those are primarily detailed questions of our accounts payable, uh, and I'm sure that we could get you uh, that detailed information. As for um, public relations. Uh, campaign. I don't know if anything was spent to that. Um, I, I guess I, I don't know what to say. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Can you hear me now, Mr. No, DePace? Mr. DePace? I guess not. Um, I'd ask the secretary, can you send a message to Mr. DePace? Let him know that we heard him. Okay. I we appreciate this. Something. We appreciate because he can't hear us. We appreciate the answers that he gave. Okay. And I guess I will go back then, um, since we don't have Mr. DePace available to answer any of further questions, although I don't think there were any initial nor any further follow-up questions. I will ask then the secretary to call the roll for this uh, resolution, which was the, the, three, the items in a group. Yes, this is resolution uh, 202405, which is accepting the FY24 quarterly and year end financials, certification of the top five compensation document, and certification of compliance with the lead paint notification laws as prepared by Gary DePace, and to allow the executive director to sign electronically and submit. Chairperson Carney? Yes. 
Thank you. Vice Chairperson Richards? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Cancel? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton? I abstain. Thank you. Madam Chair, with five yeas and one abstention. Well, that motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Thank you again, Mr. DePace. I don't think you can hear me, but we appreciate it. Okay, I can. I think something came back and thank you all. Thank you. All right. Well, that leaves us then to move on to the next regular order of business, which is the public comment. And uh, um, as you know, um, right now our agenda says tenant, staff, and public comment. Folks have two minutes to offer comment. I'm going to turn this to the secretary to moderate this. Um, and uh, on to you, Secretary Leeper. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the first group on my uh, screen is the Walter Salvo uh, LTO officers and residents. Um, so I would ask uh, you all if you could just uh, one at a time identify yourself uh, with your name and your property, uh, where you're where you're from. I'm presuming Salvo, um, and uh, I'll document you from there. But you guys are muted right now. There we go. All right. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Alan Stagnan, president of the LTO. I'd like to thank um, the executive director for supplying us with a lovely office. The only problem we have is we need more keys. Um, that is a big deal there. Uh, but our it was well worth waiting for. Hopefully in the future we can move a little faster. But we're very happy for our office and we're excited to get things rolling. Um, we are working with Danielle. Danielle is working with us with the needle exchange program. We have a lockbox from NHA uh, secured in our office. We've got uh, tapestry that will be picking up all the used needles in containers. Um, that's a big thing. We have a lot of problems with needles going down the trash chute. And uh, hopefully we'll have it rectified pretty soon. Uh, a couple other things I like to bring up was um, the stone. We have problems with the water dripping down from all the AC units down to the first floor. I know we put stone around one of the units, but we need to finish around the building. That has got to be taken care of. Uh, there's a lot of water puddles, which brings on mosquitoes and problems like that. So hopefully we can get that squared away. We got Jose that is gonna be working on helping us get the rugs clean. Uh, we're waiting. Hopefully he'll come up with some answers soon and uh, we're excited to move on. Um, so that's all I have to say right now. Oh, one other thing, um, I a couple other things I'd like to talk about is we heard rumors going around that we have Jack has moved on, but we haven't heard anything about it yet. But I'd rather hear from NHA instead of the rumors going around. But uh, hopefully we will, because we've been talking. And um, there was another thing. We had a issue with one bed bug issue. We had one apartment that was affected with bed bugs. And I like to say NHA jumped on it right away. They rectified the situation, they took it and cleaned up the area, made sure there was no spread. And uh, I thank you for not getting the people rolled up in the building over one unit that had bed bugs. Thank you for that. Cause you know, people do get tend to get riled up thinking it's a big situation when it's under control. Thank you, and I'm going to pass it on to the board members. Mike will like to speak. Thank you, Mr. Chagnon, and for all you do on behalf of the Salvo Tenant um, Organization. Yeah, no. yes. <clears throat> Good Hello, evening. My name is Mike Edwards. I'm the Vice President of Walter Salvo LTO, and I would also like to thank the Executive Director on um, the time and effort she put into giving us such a beautiful office. Oh, no, we really high. appreciate it. 
But as we get into our office and get started to, um, with some of the issues we have, we need a little clarification on, um, we need a little clarification on how many employees you have working for the Housing Authority, how many maintenance workers you have, how many plumbers, how many electricians, how many um, janitors. And we would like to be able to get that so we can go through the proper channels when we have issues dealing with situations in the building. I'd appreciate it if you could get that to us as soon as possible. And thank y'all very much. Thank you, Mr. Edwards. Why? Uh, hi, my name is John Weider. I'm uh, executive secretary for the LTO at Salvo. And uh, we do have a problems with the, like with our air conditioning units, this and that. Not with the air conditioning units themselves, but with the drainage. Okay, the pipes are probably, they should be extended about four more inches. Because if you look at our patios, they are turning green. And uh, the drippage from the water on some of the, the concrete will definitely erode it. So, uh, Jose, if you could take a look at it and give your uh, recommendations to uh, the Kara, we would uh, appreciate that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, go ahead. Tell them your name and the okay. Well, group. my name is Sandra Torrance. I'm in uh, Parkinson as well. And I'd like to speak to an important safety issue. There was a fire here a week ago, Tuesday evening. Um, I stepped off the elevator at approximately 10 minutes and six, 5.50 p.m. And I was hit in the face with a cloud of smoke. The whole lobby was filled with smoke. It seemed to originate from down the hall near the exit. I immediately went to my apartment and called 911 and they was found fire truck. Um, so there were some conversations, you know, about what caused the fire because no smoke alarms went off at all. There were no smart smoke alarms anywhere in the building. I've asked tenants. I was doing my laundry. I didn't hear any smoke alarm. I got on the elevator, came down the elevator. There were no smoke alarms. There was no flashing red lights, nothing. And the entire lobby was filled with smoke. Uh, they tested the smoke alarms. And when they tested them with a bag of smoke, the smoke alarms went off. So I was curious to know why didn't the smoke alarms go off? And another thing, and I will get back to that, but another thing, I called fire safety on Friday afternoon, and I asked what had been determined to be the cause of the fire. And uh, the cause of the smoke alarm rather is not going off. The cause was determined to be a malfunction in the panel that sets off the smoke alarm. And that's why the smoke alarms went off when they were tested, but they didn't go off when there was when the lobby was filled with smoke because the panel was malfunctioning. It didn't send a message to the smoke box. Um, also, there was a conversation with another tenant where I overheard that there had been an order from NHA, the fire department, to close the vents in the lobby and the first floor hallways after they were through with the fire emergency and that the vents are to be kept closed at all times. They're not to be open. So I, you know, I really don't know why that is. I'd like to know the reason for that. I'd like to know who gave that order and what the reason was. Also, I would like to know what has been done to investigate the malfunctioning of the panel. Uh, and I'd like to know the schedule for inspection of the fire equipment. Is, it, is there a definite time like inspecting the elevators or something posted in the elevators. There's nothing posted about the inspection of the fire, of the fire equipment. Um, and so I am requesting a meeting with fire safety to address this issue with the tenants at Salvo House to address this issue about the malfunctioning of the fire equipment. Because if this had happened at night in a seven-story building, a fire, and no alarm went off, no alarm went off. 
what could have happened to everybody in the building? That's what I'd like to know. People were sleeping. They would have no way of knowing that the building was on fire. Okay? This is a very serious issue, and I want to address ASAP because this is a life and death issue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. And just so you know, the director is taking note of each of these, and you will hear back from management regarding each of your questions at the program. Uh, may I ask when we'll hear back from management? <laughs> I'm sorry, did you ask when you're going to hear back? Yes, I, is there a timeline which will be able to for management? Because right now, I am afraid to go in the elevator. I am afraid mm -hmm. of being trapped in the elevator. I am afraid of everybody in this building getting incinerated because of faulty fire equipment. And well, so I, yes, I think that you'll get you'll get a phone call from management as soon as possible regarding how you can address your concerns. I'll just ask uh, the director, I mean, Secretary Lieber, um will the we be able to the get back the system is up and running again um i actually was out the same exact day and so uh the system uh and, and al chagnan uh was there when i um uh, when i reset the system it is up and running um and no no trouble is going on with the system right now so i just ask i just ask if uh, we understand that and thank goodness but I just ask, is there a way to report back to, yes. <clears throat> to Sandra? Yes, I will I will be um, getting back to them, but just for tonight's sake, so that people aren't worried for tonight, um, I I did go um and and investigate it. And so for tonight's sake, the system is is online and working. Um, but I will get back to people. Um, Would we say yeah, maybe by the end of the week or by yeah, the end of the week? Service. How was the issue addressed? Not right now. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm sorry that we can't actually take time from the meeting because it's not an agenda item. And in fact, it's not even usual to respond at all. I hope you'll be patient. And I'll ask the director, would you be able to reach out to the local tenant organization tomorrow? Tomorrow, someone will get back to her. She she's not in the tenant association, but we'll. Oh, get back I'm to okay. The okay, so so would would that be okay if someone gets back to you tomorrow regarding your concerns? Because we this is our business meeting, and we're not allowed to under open meeting law to take up items that aren't on the agenda. I'm so sorry. Yes, Adam, whether it's on the agenda or not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're just not allowed. We're not allowed to get into that this evening. But you will hear back from someone tomorrow. I'm looking forward to that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your concern and raising your question. And there's somebody else, I think, in the room ready to. Hi, I'm Larry White, I'm 503. Now, we've had problems with cases of COVID back in the building. There's nothing on the elevators warning people about it. They don't have to give the name or pattern number. They say there is COVID in the building. I work in the cafeteria. Some of these people come down and have COVID. They're not covered. My wife, I can't afford to be out because she has nobody else to take care of her. And I said, I served the meals and I'm scared. When I find out two days later that, oh, they're not coming tonight and they had COVID. Oh, uh, well, wait a minute. And a couple of people came down. And the only reason I found out one person had it is my brother called me. Because he knew the guy and he texted him and told me he had COVID. My brother comes over and says, oh, so-and-so has the COVID. I said, well, he's been coming down for two days. Well, he had it since Sunday. Well, wait a minute. You know, and he hasn't had mask time. So I'm there. If we could just put something on the elevators, stating COVID is in the building. That's all we got to know. Then we'll know. I can let them know down here and they'll start wearing masks. There's a lot of people who go up and ask them questions, and it'll be safer for everybody. We appreciate it. Thank you. Next. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lisa. I'm Walter Chavo, public 67. Um, I've been chosen to be the sixth floor rep here at Walter Chavo. Um, I've been noticing a lot of activity going on on the sixth floor down by where I live um, down on the fifth floor. 
I've reported it to my fellow um, neighborhood watch and LTO, um, but I would like to let housing know that I don't feel safe in the building at this point um, with these activities going on. Um, so um, I don't know what housing can do at this point, but I'm gonna continue doing the what the um um oh what I mean. the LTO the um investigations at night. Um, I noticed it at midnight every night. I've noticed it for a couple days now. But I'm going to continue doing it. Um, but I just want to let you guys know that this has been going on. So, but I've been letting people know about it. So, in the steel wells, um, there's been a lot of inactivity going on. So, I want to say thank you. I don't know actually when you're going to finish it. You have some sort of thing in the backyard, whether you're going to put the cement down or the grill or the picnic tables. Is there any more word on um, finishing it? Or is it going to be? Is it going to be like December or something like that, or next year when they get a finish? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm on the second floor. My name's Jeannie. Is there anybody else I'd like to speak? Well, I got one. No, no, Hi, this is Angela from the Salvo building as well, run the neighborhood okay. watch and try to stay involved in the in the group here. Um, first of all, I wanted to say thank you, uh, Chairman Carney. Uh, these meetings are running so much better now and uh, we appreciate the fact that you're actually in control of the meetings compared to what the way they used to be run. So we appreciate the time and effort that you put into doing that with these meetings. Um, I also wanted to thank Ms. Uh, Leeper. Um, we've been working diligently together along with uh, Jose and uh, the local tenant organization trying to um, streamline and get some of the problems in our building under control. Um, and there's, a, there's a progress going towards that. I know that we, they can't be specific with us, but we are seeing that there is some things that are changing. Um, and yes, uh, Lisa has brought a few things to our attention, and I believe that uh, Al has already reported that to folks. So we just want to keep the lines of communication open, and we thank you for working with us on all of this because we appreciate um, being able to have that communication going back and forth. So thank you. Point of order, Chair. Are we not listening? Listening names? Isn't that something we were talking I'm sorry. about? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, what's your point of order? Because I cannot, well, you I cannot um, restrict the, I cannot restrict the content of anyone's speech in public comment. Okay, I just thought that there was something. I don't know if you said it beforehand, but not to name tenants' names. I thought that that was the. I'm sorry, but I can't restrict anyone's. Um, I cannot, but I think that that ha people have been advised. I'll, I'll go ahead and reiterate that if that helps. Uh, for folks who are giving public comment, could you please refrain from naming any names? Thank you. Well, sit there. Um. Hi. Hi, Hi young boy. Hey. Heidi. Department 628. Yeah. Anyways, um, first, I'd like to say thanks for the office. Good job. And uh, so we had a leak about last weekend on the sixth floor when it was raining really bad and the maintenance came and fixed it. But there's been the entire week, it's it's been like a giant hole in the wall and it's just covered with cardboard and it keeps falling off. And I'm kind of fearful of all the bugs that are kind of living in the wall, like cockroaches, bed bugs, whatever else is in there, Sasquatch. 
And so I just don't want it crawling out and getting into my apartment and going everywhere else because it seems like a thing that would probably happen. So I don't know if you guys can get on that, but I mean, maintenance and the management should have been known about it for like the whole week. So yeah, anyway, thank you. All right, bye. Right. Got one more. Stephen, thank you very much for coming. Unit 710, Rick is my first name. And <clears throat> first thing I like to say is that I'm not safe here. Been here for two and a half years. And nobody is safe with me either. <laughs> I like to see more programs like I've been hearing. Have an income and speakers cut. Let me tell you something. I know a lot of people that can get the ball rolling and getting things motivated around here and people that want to get involved. And I've talked to some of my people on my floor. <clears throat> I think as a person that represent my floor, I introduced myself that lives on that floor to who I am. So they know that there is no stranger out there. So that means get to know who your neighbors are in the building. Makes it a lot easier. And if you don't like your neighbor, try to get along. You got to stop bashing each other. You got to learn how to be positive, move in the right direction. So I'm the seventh floor representative. So uh, let's get it together, all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Anybody else? Can you hear my comment about the stuff outside? Thank you, sir. Okay. I, so thank I you, everybody from and... the Salvo House, all the LTO folks and everyone. Um, and uh, Secretary, you have the rest of the folks you could call. Yes. Regarding the next, per the next person on my um, on my list um, of names uh, appears to be Mr. Kierdorf. Um, Mr. Kierdorf, would you like to make a public comment? Hi. Yeah, it's me again. Uh, uh, last month's meeting, the July meeting, I mentioned the fact that in the budget that started on the 1st of July, there's something for <clears throat> replacing the the exhaust fans in Four Sander. I live in Four Sander. And I noticed that on the annual plan, there is a an item for just a little bit south of $200,000 for doing this. I'm not an expert at this sort of thing. But I assume that you know that when you're repairing something like this, you have to bring it up to standard. You have to bring it up to code, which means not, in this case, not just replacing the, the exhaust fans in the building. It means offering all tenants a, uh, the, a, a uh, switch that they can turn on to run the exhaust fan in their bathroom and in their kitchen. And last month when I mentioned this, someone said, oh yes, we'll get back to you about that. And of course, no one ever did. And this is something that just came up uh, in the last few days and it's really a maintenance issue. Uh, you may know that we had a power outage on Thursday night, Friday morning. Our power was out for about 14 hours. And in my building, which is K building, no emergency lighting came on during the night. And that's a kind of serious code violation. So um, I haven't actually mentioned it to Deb Walker even, but uh, I she wasn't in on Friday. So those are just the two things that I wanted to mention. Uh, and it would be nice if somebody got back to me. I live here. I'm in apartment K95. You have my phone number. It'd be great to hear from you. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Kierdorf. Okay. The next person on my list uh, is Casey. Casey, would you care to make a comment this evening? Uh, yeah. Hi, everybody. I'm, I'm uh, not going to thank anybody today. Um, on E, 
I've been doing the alphabet, trying to simplify. I will be given inquiries. Starting with an E, it's actually a synonym for inquiry. Same word. Um, where's Jack? I heard rumors, and then I went looking for him today because I've been making inquiries about the elevator, another E word. And he says that it's we're waiting on a part. And I haven't, you know, it's still down. People keep asking me, when's the elevator going to be working? What happens if both of them are down again? Um, I just, this brings to mind accepting low bits constantly. How's that working out for you? I don't know that accepting low bids is the best idea on certain things, especially when it has to do with safety and health. We're a building of elders, disabled people. Um, anyway, I don't understand the accountant's presentation. Uh, could have been a, I couldn't even read it, even when it was large. Y'all know I have vision issues. Um, the key policy, of course, is extraordinarily burdensome still. Um, the... Typical focus on money instead of humanitarian issues by NHA was really exemplified by allowing the accountant to go first. So, you know, these are just, these are like maybe pet peeves. I, you know, I don't know. Um, but some of the things that are happening here are, again, putting the cart before the horse. That's a metaphor, I think. And if y'all understand it, you can write me, I'll explain it. Putting up these needle exchanges, the dirty needle boxes and stuff. It's not addressing the issues at hand. The issues at hand have to do with using, not, I mean, it's good to be able to dispose of needles safely, but why, 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 why this? Why this instead of any kind of education or, I mean, it's, it's, it just blows my little mind and my mind's pretty dang big. Um, so I just, um, you say you'll get back later. You have never, ever gotten back to me later. And I've had plenty of questions. And a secretary or a scribe, it probably would serve us all well to have an objective one. That's pretty simple. I know when I do my volunteer work, we have objective scribes, secretaries, because it, it just it just makes a lot of sense. It makes good business sense as, as well as good business sense, not always accepting the low bidders. And lastly, where are these solar installations? How are they used? And a lot of questions. And I'll wait patiently for answers. And and uh, I, I guess that's all. Did I get it all into two minutes? Yeah. Sometimes I can talk fast. So, uh yeah, just I'll I'll wait patiently. I, I will give my thanks to Danielle because she is super and she's very, very helpful to all tenants. And to have her around is is just a a blessing. But yeah, where's Jack? He 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 just like disappeared, seems like, because I, I went looking for him today and he wasn't around. I wanted to know about the elevators. Again, people ask me about the elevators. How do I answer these people? Okay, that's all. Thank you, Casey. Thank you, um, So the next person um, I have on my list of residents is Yasiri Castillo. Ms. Castillo, do you have anything that you'd like to say during resident comments? You're muted. Okay, I'm going to skip Ms. Castillo. Um, can you hear I, me now? Oh, yes, now I can hear you. Okay, sorry. Good afternoon. Um, uh, I just want to touch some topics today. Uh, the first one is last meeting, somebody was saying about NHA don't like brown people. They don't like Hispanics. They don't like, they don't like minority people. And it's getting old. It's getting old. 
Like instead of focusing on that childhood stuff, let's focus on what what's going on. Like and try to fix it. Like if people don't notice how many property managers are Hispanic. Nobody noticed that. And sadly, the most people who actually say racist comments to another are residents, not even staff. So I just want to keep that. Stop like stop that because it's all. It's all. I've been hearing the same thing over and over. How many times I've been in the office and nobody disrespect me, say any connotation about my race or my language or nothing. It's getting old, people. I'm just, I'm just saying. And second of all, I just want to let, like, thank the property manager in um, Florence High because I, I see the change. Like, now it's getting cleaner like try to do the maintenance report SAP as soon as they can. They do a spring clean and try to like change like the routine, the old routine that we got. Yeah, we need to improve a couple things, but step by step. So I just want to like thank her for that. And another thing I just noticed and I just like want to bring an attention about how the bo some board members refer to the chair like i feel like some people are really disrespectful are really rude doing faces like doing faces interrupting this is this is a board meeting this is not an acting class they should not behave like high school people I'm not saying all of them because all of them, like, some are really respectful. But I just want to keep that in mind. That's a reason why the chair is a chair, because you guys vote for it. If you don't like how she performs, submit a vote in and stop acting like a child, like a teenager in high school. It, it's really childish. It's really disrespectful. And I just, and people can see you guys when you do that. It's a camera. People can see how disrespectful it is. So I just want to keep that. And I just want to congratulate her for it. Keep everything in check and keep that in order because we don't want to be listening. Stuff is not important. We don't want to be like eight hours listening the same thing over and over and over. So I just want to congratulate how she's leading the board. And that should be all for me for today. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you, Ms. Castillo. Okay, um, the next person I have um, on my screen would be um, listed as CLC. Um, I think your first name is Cheryl um, and you're muted right now. If you'd like to unmute yourself and I believe your name is Cheryl, is that correct? Yeah, uh-huh. All right. Yeah, Cheryl from Salvo 623. Uh, I just like to make a comment on that last comment. There's a board member that spends the whole night rolling his eyes. So whatever. Um, I'd also like to comment on security. Huh. There's been tons of drug activity in this building. It's been ongoing. It's been ongoing for five years since I moved here and it hasn't stopped. Neighborhood watch is basically ineffective. It really is. Um, recently, myself and other people were told that we would be evicted if we allowed people in the building on the no trespass list. Personally, I have no clue who the people are on the no trespass list because I don't socialize with any of those people at all. So how would I have a clue? And um, secondly, this is causing an air of vigilanteism in the building. People are being assaulted. I don't know if you knew that or not by drug addicts that they're trying to keep out of the building. An 80 year old man was hit in the head. A 70 year old woman with a heart condition had her finger broken. It's ridiculous. It's appalling. And um, we need security here and we needed it yesterday. And neighborhood watches and cutting it. You have people in their six. You're actually expecting people in their 60s, 70s, and 80s to keep 20, 30, 40, 50-year-old drug addicts out of the building by themselves. Are you kidding me right now? That's just appalling. It's appalling. And something needs to be done about it. We're being told that you can't afford security. 
Well, the average security guard in the state of Massachusetts makes between $16 and $21 an hour. I'm sure at 20 hours a week, NHA can afford that. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Ms. Cardinal. Okay, um, the next person on my list, I don't know if this person is a resident or a member of the public. So when I call upon you, if you're a resident, if you could uh, let me know that. Um, the first name is listed as Trisha. Trisha, are you a member of the public or are you a, or are you a resident? Okay, um, and I'm going to mute you, Cheryl, because you're unmuted again. Um, so the next person is listed as a Samsung SM. Um, I don't know if you're a resident or a member of the public. If you could um, let me know by unmuting. Um, and the next person I have, um, which I believe is a resident, um, is Sari Marte. Would you like to make a public comment? Yeah, thank you. I would. Um, I want to start off by saying, you know, things have I'm I am in Florence Heights. Um, things have tremendously changed in the past, I wanna say like couple months or so, you know, with the spring cleaning, things are looking way more cleaner. So I'm happy about that. But I'm speaking on behalf of, you know, the youth. My kids are part of the youth, my kids are residents here as well. The only thing I, you know, would want to say is definitely the playground. I want to, you know, put my best foot forward and say it's not the safest playground for the kids. And, you know, I just want to advocate for the youth here, maybe get some more things going on for them, maybe putting a safer spot. It's a bit dangerous. There's not really anywhere to climb up. Um, you know, but other than that, things have been going great. I've seen a huge change here, definitely with the maintenance. Um, it looks so much more cleaner. And, you know, I'm just proud to be a resident here. That's all. Thank you so much. Thank um, you, Ms. Martin. Um, and I have um, uh, resident um, GL Nabad. Would you like to unmute and make a comment? Okay, um, how about um, Ms. Tarbutton, would you like to make a comment as a resident? Would I like to? Yes, ma'am. Um, firstly, uh, I'm taking figuratively that hat off and now I'm putting on my tenant's hat. And I also would like to say, I, I, I'm writing things down because I want to make sure it's, it's said, but firstly, um, I want to thank the uh, the chair and the NH board for the opportunity to speak my lived experiences. So thanks for that. And I'd like to start out, I guess, what I what I call ambassador moments. These are good things that are going on in Savo. And as you can hear, there are some things that are going good, not just with Savo, but I'm learning from other properties. So I really appreciate allowing tenants to to, to speak because we're learning a lot. Um, I'm impressed with the local tenants organization's effort to include residents to address their needs, keep them informed, and the way they communicate in good faith with NHA. I think they're doing their best, and it's good to see such a great turnout last week's LTO meeting. I'm especially impressed with the notices and the flyers and the meeting notes. Two secretaries, really good stuff, uh, displayed appropriately throughout the building. As I mentioned uh, in that meeting, the enthusiasm, guys, and you can see it here, of residents feel like they're being heard and that they have a voice. And that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. I've listened to their concerns about the drug problems throughout the building. And the fact that somebody even alluded to it, how tenants are letting people inside the place to sell drugs and what visiting. I personally, as I told you, I haven't witnessed it myself. I've just heard it. And I, I, I did briefly witness and heard how the NHA administration worked tirelessly one weekend by being on staff, bit on site, and interrupting, thwarting some of these ongoing issues by trespassing in one person in particular who's been living in the building as a, with a tenant for seven years. So I'm glad someone took the time and, you know, consistent the time to, I don't know if you want to say scout out or watch. I think that needs to happen on the regular, but... 
and I, you know, seven years. So 10 is seeing that something's being done about it. They're so happy and I'm happy for them too. Yet I have to say to you, as thrilled as I am, there's also concern that I think tenants especially should be mindful of. There have been reports of tenants approaching trespass individuals, which is dangerous on so many levels. Previously, an elderly resident confronted a man who trespassed, was on the trespass list and who frequently visited a tenant. And this elderly tenant was physically assaulted, quite literally hit upside the head. And most recently, a resident unofficially trying to staff the doors was verbally and physically assaulted. And uh, I didn't know if the finger was injured or broken, but I saw the thing that it was a uh, as a result of, of that from a trespass, trespass person. And I just want to emphasize the job of securing the building is not the tenant's responsibility. It's the job of NHA. My job as a board member, our job as administration, that's our job. We can't, and I'm just, I, I don't want to quell the enthusiasm that's going on, but I'm saying to my fellow residents, please try not to be keystone cops of the building for your own safety. Also, you know, shouting at others. One person said, get out of this property. You're not supposed to be here. I, and then telling another person, if you do this and da 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 da, you're going to be evicted. Last I knew, landlords don't evict, judges do. But it's setting what I'm leery of is like a bullying of tenants. And we don't want that. I'm not saying that that's happening, but that's my fear. So I just want to keep the enthusiasm going, but be mindful of your actions and reaction. Like I mentioned in my April 2020 resident comments, there are reported bed bugs in the building because it's visible with the exterminators, trucks, vans, and crews um, seen throughout Salvo. Yet radio silence uh, from officially from NHA, no robot call that all is being well and everything's being attended to to appease the safety concerns about whether it's okay to use the laundry facilities on certain floors and where there's treatment. This first I've heard is one building. I have an idea, but I think, um, I don't like, I heard something that's very disturbing to me. It's like there's an attitude that residents can't handle the truth because residents get so emotionally excited if they, if they know that this is going on. <laughs> to not tell them brings on more anxiety. Residents have a right to safety and security, including to have a bug free, it's a violation bug free environment. And not to do that is patronizing, paternalistic, that's a patronizing paternalistic practice. Where people are adults to know what's going on, they should be treated as such, especially as the mission says about the excellent standards here. I'm not asking that you name the tenant and, you know, what is that, scarlet letter that tenant. And, and I'm not asking for dental records, uh, just the spirit of transparency and consideration. Additionally, as I've said too many times to count, it still would be beneficial if all tenants on all properties receive ongoing educational training on bed bugs. Remember, they are jumping vampires. So they are hitchhiking vampires. So, and that's just something we should be doing on the regular. But I do have to say in seeing people here, because for two years I saw that extermin exterminator van here, but I didn't have a clue what they were. Some people say, are they for roaches? But again, silence. And I think that people need to speak out. People can handle it, especially if you let them know we're on top of this Ms. and all Tara, that kind your of stuff. Time, your, time, your time is up. If you can finish your sentence. That okay, way. thank you. Okay, I have one other thing, but I'll say lastly and very importantly, staff are not permitted to talk to residents about other residents. It's inappropriate, violation of trust. So many rules and regulations are violated, and this should be reported. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tarbett. Uh, Madam Chair, I don't have any other um, residents that I'm aware of. Uh, so if you'd like yeah, to. Yeah, you on, just move please. straight through to staff and then public comment, please. Yes, are there any staff uh, members that would like to make a comment at this time? If so, please raise your hand. Hearing none, uh, I have one member of the public, it looks like, um, with his hand already raised. So I'd like to, uh, with your permission, Madam Chair, uh, call on uh, Mr. Halberstadt. Thank you. Welcome, Mr. Halberstadt. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I, uh, tonight I'm going to, with your permission, read a communication to the board from Veronica. Please. Please. I, I concerned master's resident. Um, I'm reluctant to change any part of it. It's gonna run a little long. If you wanna hold it- Please read minutes. it, please read it in its entirety. Okay, thank you. Yes. 
Uh, hi there, commissioners. I couldn't be there today because of a conflict with scheduling. Please enter this into the official record. I'd like to start by thanking you for your leadership on this board. In your June 2024 meeting, a commissioner raised concerns of the minutes being inaccurate. Why did the body continue to vote to pass meeting minutes that were incorrect? The open meeting law requires that a public body, quote, create and maintain accurate meet minutes of all meetings, end quote. That's uh, general laws, chapter 30A, section 22A. Meeting minutes are the official record of these meetings and as such are extremely important. Additionally, most of you are using what look like personal emails. Consider what that means if there's a public records request or open meeting law violation. I'd encourage you to get official NHA mail. Secondly, I watched this meeting, I think that's the June 2024 20, meeting, and others in shock at the level of condescension so clearly expressed by Chair Carney towards Commissioner Tarbutt and Springfield. I'd encourage Commissioner Carney and others to rewatch some of these meetings. You won't get far into the videos before seeing passive aggressive remarks made of Tarbutt and Springfield's statements, questions, concerns. Is the intent to demean her in public meetings by commenting on how she doesn't understand when she notes valid concerns? such as the inconsistencies in the meeting notices and agendas. Is the intent to discard that question asking? Comments such as these are called microaggressions often made towards black women. There are many resources available online for those that are interested in pretty, critically reflecting on how white womanhood shows up each month and the classist and racist implications. Lastly, several commissioners are missing bios and it will be great to see them on the website, which is well organized, by the way, well done. Commissioner Tarbutton Springfield, thank you for your continued advocacy for the tenants. Sometimes when others are blinded by your light, they aim to tarnish your good name or throw doubt in your character. We see you, your leader is commendable. Warmly, Veronica J, Massachusetts resident. Thank you for your courtesy. Thank you, Mr. Halberstadt, as usual, thank you for attending our meeting. And just so you know that um, <clears throat> that that letter was received by members of the commission and will be entered into the official record. Thank you. Thank you for your courtesy. Sure. And um, <clears throat> Madam Chair, um, Sydney Fahey uh, is the only other one that I think uh, but I believe she's with the mayor's office, um, could potentially have uh, a public comment. And although the resident comment portion has been closed, a resident um, is- Yeah, please allow, I see that uh, Ms. Nabad has her hand raised. We'll, yeah. we'll certainly uh, hear from Ms. Nabad. But first I wanna thank um, Sydney for joining us from the mayor's office. Thanks for your interest. Thank you. Ms. Nabad, you may unmute. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yes, hello. I, I am interested in understanding why there's a separation between residents and public. I think everybody is public and everybody is a voting constituent um, that lives in public housing. And so I'd like that to change so that people don't get targeted for their class and status. So I would appreciate if I could just be treated as a member of the public. Also, not to mention that I do also serve on the Northampton Housing Partnership. And there are issues that I hear that are happening within public housing where I no longer live. And I do have concerns sometimes about that. And I would say right now that I'm very concerned about the vigilantism and also the fundamental denial that racism doesn't exist in public housing, it most certainly does. Um, it may not exist for all groups, but it certainly exists for some, and it's not just limited to race, it's, it's also um, a lot of, um, you know, a lot of punishing and, and discriminatory action taken against folks who have 
uh, various disabilities and uh, vis visible or invisible disabilities, which I think is also concerning. Um, and so um, it would be great if also if people would not come to these meetings to cross talk, it would be great if we could just look at the issues, security, safety first. Um, you know, everybody wants to feel like where they live is their home. It's really, really important to people's health and well-being. And that is the mission of the Housing Authority. And so thank you for letting me speak. Of course. Thank you, Ms. Nabod. It, does that conclude all of the um, folks with, com with comment, whether they be any members of the public, including residents and staff or anyone? Yes, we've called on um Thank you. Thank you. Please. And I just want to give a final thank you to everyone. As usual, we really appreciate your providing comment. It does help us um, as a board and as an agency. And um, for those residents who brought up particular concerns, as we've noted, those will be addressed <clears throat> by management. And as typical, will be there'll be a report on those in the next month's executive director report. So once again, thank you everybody for your comment. And I will move on to the next item of business, which is the executive director's report. And I'll ask please uh, the secretary, well, in this case, the executive director Leeper to provide a report to the board. Okay. Um, give me just a moment, Madam Chair, sorry. While she's doing that, I have a point of uh, uh, order, please. I'm sorry, Ms. Tar uh, Commissioner Tarbutton. So a point of order is related to the items on the agenda or the order of yes. business? Yes, please. What's your point? Uh, uh, with the executive director's report, I had asked a couple of meetings to have a copy of it, and I didn't see it in my packet, and I didn't know if that was an oversight. But I do read them. I want to know. Because they, I can't always hear, them, but I'd like to to have it as well. So noted. Thank you. Noted. Thank you. Okay. Executive Director Monthly Summary August twenty twenty four. The GPR was two hundred twenty thousand seven hundred forty seven thousand and ninety dollars and ninety three cents. We collected two hundred twenty thousand eight hundred thirteen dollars and five cents, which was ninety one percent. We have. Um, Recertified 61 people in Section 8, um, none for public housing this month. Um, 56 uh, recertifications completed in Section 8. Five ex uh, expired in Section 8. Um, we're waiting on paperwork from uh, the relative third party verif verifications, excuse me. Um, wait list, federal applicants, we have 96 one bedrooms, 34 two bedrooms. 23 three bedrooms, two four bedrooms, and section eight has 58. State applicants, we have 23,604 family applicants and elderly disabled, we have 6,209 applicants. Move outs, public housing has had three, section eight had six. Public housing had two move-ins and section eight had three. We had no one on notice for public housing. End of month vacant ready were 11. End of month vacant unready were 12 for a total of 23. 14 are pre-leased and we are processing seven uh, total lists of applicants in CHAMP. We completed seven make readies, um, all of which were rehabs. We took in 195 work orders. Um, we began the month with 58 incomplete. Um, we completed 188 work orders and we're currently working on 65. Um, we had uh, the Summer Eats program ended for the season on August 8th and we're pleased to say that the number of children who took advantage of the free summer lunch program increased from last year. This ongoing collaboration with the Northampton School Department benefits not only our residents but also the children of the community and we look forward to the participation uh, continuing to grow each summer. We have regularly scheduled blood pressure checks at our senior sites from the Department of Public Health every Wednesday on a rotating schedule. 
We're excited to say that Valley Bike is back and Valley, Valley Bike Share representatives will visit Northampton Housing Authority properties to help residents sign up for the program during the regularly scheduled Grow Food Northampton market tables. Qualified residents can take advantage of the equity membership for just $4 per month. This makes it easier for everyone to access this eco-friendly transportation op uh, option. Additionally, we are working on, uh, I'm working with uh, the resident services coordination team to uh, get Narcan training in here for both staff and um, residents alike uh, for those interested in participating. Um, we're also in the process of getting uh, people in to, we, we've been having a hard time getting someone in to uh, replace the podiatrist that passed away. So we're looking at other options for that. And we're also looking at options to have someone come in at a discounted rate to provide on-site um, haircuts for the residents who just can't get out there to get it done. And, and the potential uh, for residents who can't get out there if they wanna get their nails painted. Uh, so ends the executive director's report. Thank you, Director Leeper. And um, I would ask then if there are comments or concerns regarding the executive director's report that they be addressed via email to the director. And um, uh, I think that the director has heard that a commissioner has not received some copies of the report if they are written. And I guess we'll ask if we just check into that, please. Director Leeper, and I'm going to move forward then to the next. I have one order question regarding that. I was under the impression that the executive director report also includes some of the questions that were that were asked by residents. So is that totally separate? You just because I, I just wanted to know when that was addressed, what time, what came of it. So I saw I don't know. I thought that was part of it. Well, um, I will just note that Director Leeper was only first back at the meeting at the last meeting. And so I, I would um, ask then if those are things that are still being tallied and uh, I'd ask the director, are those still being tallied? And if so, could they be then reported to the board at the next meeting with all of the additional uh, questions, concerns raised by residents this evening? Yes, that's the plan. Okay, thank you. Um, so our next item of business is the approval of the July regular meeting minutes. And as I mentioned at the last meeting, um, I have uh, sent a directive to board members that if they have additions, corrections, or deletions, they should submit them in writing prior to three o'clock on the meeting day so that we have the time to pull together the Zoom transcript, the Zoom recording, and whatnot, and be able to, as a board, fully deal with those. Having received none today by three o'clock, I'm going to then ask for a motion from the floor to approve the minutes as have been submitted and are in your board packet. And I'll ask, is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Is there a second, please? Second. Moved and seconded. And so, uh, Secretary, would you please call the roll? Yes. Approval of the July regular meeting minutes. Chairperson Carney. Yes. Vice Chairperson Richards. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Commissioner Tarbutton. No, and I submitted mine at 306 because I didn't have a, a access to a computer. I will note that for folks who have not had a chance to, it does not mean that they can never be changed. It just means that we need to move forward based on having had a few meetings where there were the meetings, the approval of minutes was kicked down the road and then actually there was an oversight. So we need to move forward with this, but that does not mean that any commissioner may at the next meeting or any subsequent meeting submit in advance in writing um, the addition, correction or deletion that would like to be made. And then we will take it that up. We have actually in the past found those that there were some issues, some things that by oversight were not corrected in a previous meeting a set of meeting minutes, and those can still be corrected um, at a future date should that uh, need arise. So at the next meeting, Commissioner Tarbutton, please, um, we'll take up 
any additions, corrections, and deletions that you have supplied. I haven't been able to see them today. So um, I think we were in the middle of the roll. Was that correct? Yes. Uh, and that so was in I, I, I'm going to say no. I, I, why well, I say yes and then go back and maybe have to say no? That that makes no sense. I think it should be table. So no. Okay. So yeah. you have um, you have up to Commissioner Tarbutton, and you may move forward. Commissioner Cancel. Uh, yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, five yeas and one uh, nay. Thank you. And so those meeting minutes have been approved with the understanding that Commissioner Tarbutton will be bringing a correction, addition, or deletion to the next meeting in writing or providing it in advance in writing so that we may provide the board with the adequate information. And I'll just be clear, you already have it. So do you want me to bring it again? What, what do you want? I've already submitted it to you. Thank you. So the okay. next item is... Under unfinished business, this is again the standing item that we've been requested to place on our agenda until the matter is completely resolved. And EOHLC has asked us to keep as an agenda item this status of the fiscal year 2023 AUP agreed upon procedures action plan. And they have informed us that there is still no update. So there is no discussion then. And so I'm just moving on to the next item of business. Now, I will note that we have taken up the um, resolutions regarding the uh, quarterly and year-end financials at the early part of this meeting. But then we have a few more new business items. And I'll ask, please, before I, I ask for a motion to approve, I'll ask, please, the secretary, could you read the resolution number two? which is 202406, the adoption of fiscal year 2024, federal income limits. Secretary? Yes, yes. resolution 202406, revised uh, federal income limits for FY24. Whereas the Northampton Housing Authority is revising its income limits for federally aided family, elderly and section eight housing programs per the HUD directive, by utilizing low income limits for its family and elderly housing programs and very low income limits for its Section 8 programs. Therefore, be it resolved that the Northampton Housing Authority adopt the following income limits for its programs. Extremely low limits are utilized to comply with the HUD income targeting requirements and they are not program, they are not program eligibility requirements and further be it resolved that the resolution take effect immediately. And they are the um, published income limits by HUD um, on their website, which range between 32,850 to 87,600. You're, uh, you're muted, you're muted, Chair Carney, sorry. Sorry, had to switch screens. So that resolution having been read from the secretary and before we open it for discussion, I'll need to have a motion to approve from the floor. So moved. Moved by uh, Commissioner Jones. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded by Commissioner Richards. Now it is open for discussion. I'm going to go around and ask folks to first um, uh, provide their questions and concerns regarding this item for the director, which she can tally. And then I'll ask the director to answer those. And then if necessary, go around again for any follow-up questions. Yes, please. Questions, concerns from members of the board. Maybe I'm not seeing the whole thing here. Hold on, I'll do a switch to gallery view. Yes, Commissioner Tarbutton, please. Okay. Uh, hi. Um, I, I, as I mentioned, I got this uh, packet Friday afternoon um, and didn't have a chance to go through everything. I still had some questions. I still were looking for, especially the part about the, um, uh, the SIMPAC and the federal income limits. Like, I'd like to know what they are. Are they being increased or decreased? So I don't have enough to accurately vote on this. Um, but I, I would like to know that part. I know it's sort of spoken in generic terms and I was given information on it. I just didn't have the time to, because I like to trust and verify, not that there's a problem with that, but I didn't have the chance to, to do that because, uh, 
of the time of getting the minutes. And uh, and again, that's why my, my comments to you are gone. I use an offsite computer, so they're not open on the weekends. So, um, so to be clear- Understood, um, um, understood. before I go to you, uh, Director Leeper, may I please first ask, and before I even ask for other commissioners if they have questions and concerns, I do want to note, just for those listening, so we do send, and we have sent this packet out on Wednesday, so um, Wednesday of last week, and unfortunately, um, Commissioner Tarbutton was not able to access those until Friday, but just so folks understand, are there any other questions that can be noted before I turn to Director Lieber to address Point of information. They were sent out on Wednesday, then why did I get it hand-delivered on Friday? I don't go get them, so I don't know why they were here on Wednesday and I didn't get them to Friday. I'm sorry, I can't answer your question right now, Commissioner Tarbutton. I'm just letting folks know that we send the board packet electronically to all commissioners on Wednesday it was sent. Okay. And I'm sorry- Are we having one? I'm sorry that you weren't able to receive that. And I'm sorry that you weren't able to get your personally requested printed out version of all of the board packet until Friday. But I do want to go on now to other, other I'm not going to answer your question of why. I'm going to actually turn to other board members and ask if they have any questions or concerns. I just want to thank you for saying that. I do appreciate that. I just asked for the clarification. So sometimes clarifications aren't negative, aren't putting something down. It's just because that didn't happen with me. Mine is hand delivered and I asked that. So I appreciate you doing that, but uh, and uh, I am one who will ask questions. Thank you. Please understand no negative intention uh, in, in any way um, expressed or intended. And again, I'll just ask if there are other board members who have any questions or concerns regarding this item. Hearing none, then, um, Secretary, could you please call the roll? Yes, and Madam Chair, did you want me to tell you what the 2023 limits were uh, comparatively? To oh, yes, before? just for the public for public edification. I'm okay. sure that folks would appreciate so the, hearing that. The, the 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 standard way to look at this is in the four uh, because it goes by the number of people in the family, and typically people look at the four person four four person family column. Um, to make it uh, uh, simplified. So in 2023, the um, the extremely low limit for a person, a family of four was 30,000. For very low income, it was 49.8. And for low, it was 79.7. And that was in 2023. And so in 2024, it became uh, extremely low is 32.850 very low is 54,750 and low is 87,600. 87, it's part of the Springfield um, Mass uh, HUD Metro FMR area. So um, these are required by HUD for those programs. Um, and so they raise the income limits. Thank you, um, Director Leeper. And just so the folks know, these are, as Director Lieber stated, these are the stated limits by HUD for the federal programs. We can't change them. or we're, It's up to us, though, to accept them, as has been read in the resolution. So at this point, I will go ahead and ask the Secretary to please call the roll. Yes, Resolution 2024-06, adoption of the FY2024 federal income limits. Chairperson Parney. Yes. Thank you. Vice Chairperson Richards. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton. Uh, without getting uh, information ahead of time to go over it, I can't make an informed decision, so I'll abstain. Thank you. Commissioner Cancel. Yes. Thank you. Madam Chair, five yeas and one abstention. Motion carries. Thank you. That motion carries. And could you please then read the next uh, resolution under yes. um, new business before I ask for a motion from the floor? Thank you. Yes. This is resolution number 202407, which is certification of the FY 2024 Section 8 CMAP submission. The Northampton Housing Authority operates a Section 8 leased housing program funded by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. And whereas HUD requires annual submission of the Section 8 Management Assessment Program, CMAP, 
certification. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Commissioners of the Northampton Housing Authority does hereby adopt Resolution 202407, incorporating the submission of the required documentation in the form of HUD Form HUD 52648 for fiscal year 2024 and certifies that it has received no evidence to indicate seriously deficient performance by the NHA, which would cast doubt on its capacity to operate and own housing funded by federal government and certifies that it has adopted policies so as to operate its programs in compliance with the federal law and regulation. And further, that the board authorizes the executive director and chairperson to sign form HUD 52648 on behalf of the authority. Thank you, uh, Director Leeper. So in order to put this on the floor, I'd ask please, is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Brooks. Is there a second, please? Second. second. Okay, we, we have Commissioner Richards with a second. And so now that it's on the floor, I'll ask please um, for folks to uh, address their questions or concerns through the chair to Director Leeper, who then will tally all these and respond. Commissioner Tarbutton, please. I'm sorry with this new thing. I hit hand, but you got to hit it. So pardon me. Uh, I am uh, really very interested in this, the, the CMAP certifications, just like I'm very interested in the uh, solar information that's going out. But I really would like to really uh, wish I had more time. I wish I was able to afford the time to go through all this. I know we don't have uh, meetings and co uh, committees about this, but it seems like a, 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 a really wonderful thing if I knew more about it. I particularly on my own listen to the new PHNs that come in, PHNs are public housing notices. And so I'm very interested in it. And um, it's just a little too bad that I don't get my information. And I'm not following anyone for that, but that's why I can't make informed uh, decisions on this without all the information. I don't vote just to go along to get along. I vote on what I see and what comes before me and the questions that are asked. So that's all I have to say on this. Noted. Are there any other questions or concerns from board members to direct to Director Leeper? I'll ask then the secretary to please call the roll. Yes, Madam Chair, resolution 2024-07, certification of fiscal year 2024, section eight CMAP. Chairperson Carney. Yes. Vice, thank you. Vice Chairperson Richards. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton. Abstain. Thank you. Commissioner Pansel. Yes. Thank you. Madam Chair, five yeas and one abstention. Thank you. That motion carries. And I'm just getting to my next item. Uh, I'll just go ahead and ask the secretary to read the next item under new business. Yes, um, Madam Chair, this is a motion to execute the annual wage match form and allow the executive director to electronically sign and submit. Um, as you may recall last year, uh, the state, it used to be that it was a one and done um, item, but last year the state released a public housing notice in 2019, it's 2019-16, um, say stating that it was required every year um, to uh, have the executive director and board um, uh, acknowledge the wage match um, confidentiality information to pr uh, protect our residents' confidentiality, uh, the disclosure and security training for safeguarding of information and that we have signed these acknowledgements on file. Um, and so this motion is um, to allow myself um, to electronically sign on behalf of the chair and, uh, and for me to sign and to submit electronically to the state that we have, um, that we're following that policy and that we have completed that training and are safeguarding that information 
in accordance with the regulations um, by the state and in accordance with the PHM 2023-03. Thank you, Director Leeper. Um, so before I open this for discussion, I'll ask, please, is there a motion to approve from the floor? Motion to approve. Thank you, Commissioner Cancel. May I have a second, please? Second. second. Moved and seconded. And I will note for commissioners, all of these PHNs that were referenced are in the um, board packet that you received last week, and um, please feel free now to raise your hand and address any questions through the chair to the director regarding the motion on the floor. Director, I'm sorry, Commissioner Tarbutton, please. You're sorry? What is it? What? Why? I'm sorry because I started to call you Director Tarbutton by mistake. <laughs> please forgive me. <laughs> so, okay. Go ahead, well, Commissioner. Um, my question is, and actually I did read this PHN and I'm somewhat familiar with it, my question is, I got to ask is, when did you have a uh, training or whatever on the certification on, on this information? Uh, a lot of things, I, I don't know if this was, I mean, there are things that go on that I'm just not aware of because I, I, I had a couple of questions that I would have liked to ask. So I'm just curious, when did you go, when did it go to the training and who all went? And before I ask Director Leeper, I'll ask about, are there other questions that you have, Commissioner Tarbutton? And then I'll go around the room and ask other for other questions. You mean questions about what? About, this particular thing? I, I'm asking if you have further questions beyond the questions regarding training that you just asked. Are there further questions that you would like to pose before I go around the room and ask for questions and concerns from other commissioners? No, Chair. I would have I would have listed them. So thank you for thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions or concerns from commissioners? Okay, uh, Director Lieber, do you have yeah, any? We, I am required to certify that the staff has completed the training annually, and we do complete the training annually um, for the security training. Um, and so the wage match um, is doing the, uh, we, we pull the wages uh, down from the state website um and then the security training is how you handle that and so um i certify um all the staff by putting them through the training and then certify that they've that, that they've done the training um including myself um so i hope that answers your question uh commissioner Tarpon. you mean all staff maintenance staff finance executive assistants is that who you're talking about all that staff or just the staff that Sort of no, deals it's, with it's, it's only staff that would need to have access to residents' financial information. Thank you for that clarification. You're welcome. Uh, I see um, no other questions unless I'm missing somebody's hand. No, I don't see anyone. Okay, I'll ask then the secretary to please call the roll. Okay, this is a motion to allow me to execute and electronically sign and submit the annual wage match form um, on behalf of the chair and the executive director. Uh, Chairperson Carney? Yes. Vice Chairperson Richards? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Jones? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Brooks? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Tarbutton? Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Cancel? Yes. Thank you. Madam Chair, six yeas. Motion carries. Thank you. That motion carries. And um, I will note, so the next item that we have under new business is one that I'm asking, and maybe I'll ask um, uh, my fellow committee member, Commissioner Cancel, too. So I do think that this will require more time than we have left for this meeting, meaning that there are two commissioners that do need to leave in time to get to another meeting that happens this evening. I'm asking if we can table this till the next meeting. And so um, I'm asking Commissioner Cancel, would you be prepared to support that from our committee, moving this to the next meeting rather than this evening? Absolutely. Okay. So I, I think I may need a motion to table. And I'd ask Commissioner Cancel, would you be willing to offer that motion?
Yeah, motion to um, move this uh, to our next meeting. Thank you, Commissioner. Second. I guess I need a second, and that's um, Commissioner Tarbutton is second. So moved and seconded to move this last item under new business to the next meeting in September. And that does not, um, I don't think requires discussion. I'll ask the secretary, please call the roll. Okay, motion to table the bylaw. Uh, uh, we're adopting the bylaws on positive recommendation for, of the governance and policy committee to the next meeting. Uh, Commissioner Carney. I mean, Chairperson yes. Carney. Geez, I'm tired. <laughs> yes. Vice Chairperson Richards. Yes. Commissioner Jones. Yes. Commissioner Brooks. Yes. Commissioner Tarbutton. Yes. When's the next meeting and what meeting y'all going to? Third Monday. <laughs> third Monday in September. You have the date. President. Commissioner Cancel. Commissioner Cancel. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. That's six affirmative. Yes. Thank you so much. I think that wraps up all of our business items. Correct me if I'm wrong. You Madam have Secretary. one one final motion. Oh, you mean that final motion that is non-debatable? Yes. Would someone please offer that one final motion? I have a motion, motion that we adjourn. adjourn. Okay, I heard six people move that we adjourn. Could I hear six Second. seconds, please? And I heard six seconds, and I think you may uh, go ahead and call the roll or just show go by show of hands. Aye. 729. Meeting adjourned at 729. Thank you, everybody, being here. Great meeting, and we'll see you in September. <laughs>